Welcome, this is Information Service Engineering, lecture number eight, Knowledge Graphs, part three. In this section of the lecture, we are going to query knowledge graphs with Sparkle. The Sparkle query language is here on the query level of the Semantic Web Technologies deck, and it's pretty similar to SQL or SQL for relational databases. What is particular about Sparkle, it's a protocol which works on top of HTTP. So it's a client-server-based uh, client architecture. You have a Sparkle Quark client, usually in your browser, and you have a Sparkle server, which is a Sparkle endpoint. In between, they are simply talking HTTP, and on top of HTTP, there is the Sparkle protocol layer, and you simply pass the Sparkle query via HTTP to the Sparkle survey. Everything works here again like anything else in the semantic web on uh, port 80, which is the standard HTTP port, which means you don't need any additional uh, port regulations and administrations for your firewall. And you can simply use an external Sparkle server in that way. But we don't have to look closer into that protocol. Let's have a look at the Sparkle endpoint. So we are dealing with two knowledge bases. So you have already learned about DBpedia and Wikidata. And these two we are going to serve and query now in this lecture. OK, we will start with DBpedia simply since the names there are self-speaking for the properties, for the individuals, for all of the entities. And simply for that reason, it's easier for you to understand the Sparkle query before we then later on switch to Wikidata. OK. Most of all, we will start with a small, let's say, example knowledge graph. So this is a small sample that we have taken out of DBpedia and we have, of course, endorsed it and changed it a bit according to our needs. And what you see here in this small RDF-based knowledge graph that we are querying next, we have several books for you. First book is 1984 by George Orwell. Probably you know that it's a dystopian novel. Then we have another book. It's The Inconvenient Truth by Al Gore. So this, of course, has something to do with global warming and climate change. And we have another book called Make Room, Make Room from Harry Harrison. This is also a science fiction novel and it's also a dystopian novel. And it has been um, yeah, filmed. And the film probably you have seen, a rather interesting film from the early 70s uh, with Charlton Heston. It's called Soylent Green. I can recommend that. OK. So how does Sparkle query work? For any kind of query, we need variables. And Sparkle variables usually then are bound to RDF terms. And within your query, a variable simply is represented by a name of the variable, which is led by a question mark. So question mark and then any character sequence, this is the name then of your vari variable. And within a Sparkle query, this is a variable. And in the same way as in SQL, a query for variables is performed via a SELECT statement. So you see here SELECT, TITLE, AUTHOR, DATE. All of three are here variables. This looks exactly like in a SQL query. And the result of your query again will be a table like in a SQL query. And the table consists of, you know, exactly then columns of the results that you have specified within your select statement. So here I want to have a table consisting of title, author and date. And this will be then filled by how I specify the rest of my Sparkle query. So simply keep in mind Sparkle results here are given in terms of tables and the single columns of the table. They are made out by the variables that you have here behind your select statement. OK. How does Sparkle work? Sparkle works with graph pattern matching. So it's based on RDF turtle serialization. So if you know turtle, you can read Sparkle and you do basic graph pattern matching. What's a graph pattern or a triple pattern? This is an RDF triple that contains variables at any arbitrary place. So a triple we know that consists of subject, property and object. And on any of these places, of course, can be variables within your query. So therefore, a graph pattern or triple pattern is turtle plus variables. Simple examples, if I want to look for books and their authors, and we know that books and authors 
are connected via a specific property here, for example, DBO authors, then we are looking for a variable which we might call book. We might call it also in a different way. And then comes the turtle version of exactly that property, which means we can abbreviate that by using here DBO as a prefix and then say author. So this is relating to the sample knowledge graph that you have seen a few slides earlier. And then the object will be another variable which we call author, which means then we are querying the knowledge graph that we have seen for triples which contain as a property author. And we want to see which books are connected to which author. So here you see author and book are my two variables. And now if we are going to look at the knowledge graph example we had, what we want to have is of course the books we have there plus DBO author. You see this here also indicated in the red arrows and then the authors which belong to the books like here George Orwell, El Gore or Harry Harrison. So this is graph pattern matching because the sparkle, so the knowledge graph is scanned and iterated with the help of that Sparkle query. And then there is graph pattern matching going on. We are simply looking which patterns here are matching and then exactly the matching pattern are returned and delivered back in the query. Okay, now this was the matching of one pattern. What is quite straightforward, I can construct complex query pattern simply by adding one graph pattern after another graph pattern. And this is then a so-called conjunctive query because these graph patterns are joined conjunctively. So for example here, if I want to find books, their authors and their genre, I need then two graph patterns. The first one simply connecting author with books by DBO author. And then I look for the books and their genre. So I take then book and then DBO literary genre. This is again a fixed property and I use genre as a variable. And the interesting thing here is book. If I use this here, this is the same variable. So it refers to the same book. So for the same book, we want to have its author and its literary genre if we want to do that. So this is a conjunctive query. Let's make it a bit more complicated. Let's say we want for a given URI, which here of course is a book. So for a given book URI, we want to find its author or authors if there are more, the birthplaces of its authors, including the number of population of the birthplace. So this would be then a three-step query. First of all, what we are having, we, we, we uh, take a given book URI. So for example, here, Brave New World. We are looking for the author via DBO author. And then we are looking for the birthplace of the author, which would be then author, DBO birthplace, and then the birthplace as the next variable. So as you see here, author in the first line, which is the object, it's also author then in the second line as a subject. And then of course, we are in the same way connecting the third graph triple pattern with birthplace, population total, and then the population number, which might be a string or whatever, uh, or a number in that case. And here, of course, the object of the second graph pattern will become the subject of the first graph pattern. So you see here, if you think in terms of relational databases, these are a lot of joints going on. So these operations usually are costly, but in a Sparkle query, you can solve this via graph pattern matching. Okay, so these are the graph patterns. Now let's have a look how a real complete Sparkle query would look like. So this is the Sparkle general query format that you see here. The query is slightly different, but more or less the same like before. What we are looking for here is now search for all authors and the titles of their notable works. First thing we see here are the so-called prefix definitions. In the prefix definitions, I specify all of the namespaces that I need. Like, you know this already from Turtle. Of course, I define here prefixes to make things that come later on easier to read, so better readable. Okay, then comes my select statement. And after the select keyword, 
in Sparkle, there come the output variables. We know this already. So here, for example, I want to have the author names and I want to have the title. Next in Sparkle, I have to say, yeah, which graph should be queried. This is the from clause. From clauses are also available in SQL. So here it's quite similar. I specify exactly the graph to be queried. If I leave this out, then I query the default graph of that Sparkle endpoint that I query. And then comes the so-called where clause. And here I specify all of the graph patterns that should be matched. I can do this then much more complicated, so I can then also include filter clauses. But here I simply combine first some graph patterns in a conjunctive way. So first I'm asking for, um, OK, what I'm looking for, the author should be of type writer so that we really have authors. Then I want to have the label of the author so that I can read it. And then I want to see, OK, what's the notable work of that author? And of course, I want to see the label of that notable work simply to have something readable there and not only the URI. Because I'm not always looking at DBpedia and then from the URI I don't get enough information, so therefore I look simply for the label. So here you see again we have the link to the Sparkle endpoint, which automatically also then gives us here the query we are looking for and we execute that query and what you are seeing here is then a table consisting of author names and titles. So this here are the names of the variables in the columns. And then you see here, yeah, lots of author names and lots of titles. And of course they are given here, since we are asking DBpedia, often in different kind of languages. So you see here, EN always stands for English, PT stands for Portuguese, for example, FR stands for French, IT stands for Italian, and so on. So there are lots of languages. So therefore you have lots of repetitions going on there. Okay, but this is our standard Sparkle query format. Okay, now let's make this a bit more complicated. You can modify the output that we have. So for example, if you want to search again for all the authors and the titles of their notable works, now I can order the output. I can say I want to order it in ascending order by the authors. This is the very first clause you see here, order by ASC gives the direction ascending and descending. So ascending here by, and then here in parentheses, the author name. This is the variable according to which you are ordering your output. You could of course order this then according to a sequence of variable, then it's first ordered by the first variable you see here, and then by the second one and so on. I want to limit the results only to the first 100. Then I use the keyword limit and tell the number how many I want to see. And I don't want to start with the very first one. I want to start with an offset of 10, which means I want to start at position 10. So I give an offset position of 10. Let's see this query then here in the DBpedia Sparkle interface. You see here I have the, I have the order by clause. I have the limit clause. I have the offset clause. I execute the query. And then you see it's only a hundred and it's the first hundred and we can't even read it unless you are able to read uh, Arabian script. And here you see, of course, the first 100 examples here. And yeah, this is the according result that we wanted to see. So now we know already this general Sparkle query format and how to modify our output. One more thing we have to learn here in the first Sparkle lecture, and this is we can further modify, you know, and filter the graph patterns that we have here. So we specify constraints for the result. And one is a filter constraint. And I can say here, for example, look at the query, search for all authors and their notable works. And now I look for works that have more than 500 pages. And again, I limit the results to the first 100. So let's have a look at the graph patterns. First pattern, author is of type writer. So I look for all the authors. Then I look for the author name, which means author, RDFS label, author name. So this is what I'm looking for here in the output. I look for the author name. Again, I look for the notable works and I look here for um, the number of pages of this notable work. 
And um, here, the number of pages, I pose a filter condition directly afterwards, which says filter, that's the keyword. And then I say in parentheses, my constraint, my filter condition, I say the variable pages I had here before must be larger than or greater than 500. So that specifies that I want to have only books with more than 500 pages. And in the last line here, I'm again looking for the title of that work. So I look for the RDFS label of that work and put this in the variable title, which is then here also in my output variable. So in my output variables, I have the author name, the title, and then the number of pages, which must be larger than 100. And I only am interested in the first 100 within my query results here. So I go here to the query. You see here exactly the graph patterns and the filter condition we were talking about. I execute the query and you see here then, of course, this is then a list of exactly these kind of novels or works, their title and then the number of pages. And you see here, of course, these page numbers are larger or greater than 500. This was the condition and it's only the first 100. But again, since we have not restricted to a specific language, again, we have many repetitions in there. Okay, now let's see how we can get rid of these many repetitions. We want to filter for a specific language. And a language filtering is one of the so-called unary operators of Sparkle. And besides the language filtering, which we have here, that's the, um, in this line, you see here language A. So every, so no, this was a bit too quick. So we have here language of a specific expression A. And this means, um, yeah, A usually is a literal and we are asking for the language of this literal A and the result then would be another simple literal. So this would then be, um, for example, English, French, Italian. So it would be this two character identifier that I can access here. There are even more. So what I can do here for all of these operators, I can negate, for example, if the result type A or A is a Boolean operator, I can simply negate it. If it's numeric, I can make it positive. I can make it negative. Um, I can ask whether a specific variable is bound. So that the result will be yes or no. It will be Boolean, true or false, if the variable is bound or not to an RDF term. I can ask if A is a URI. I can ask if A is a blank note or if A is a literal. I can simply then uh, convert a to a string, which means if A is a URL, an entity, I can simply then treat this URL as a string and convert it to a string. And I can also ask um, you know, what kind of data type has a specific literal A. And then I, there a, a URI is returned, telling me that this, for example, is a date or this is a Boolean or this is a string or this is a kind of other kind of um, data type of that literal. In our example, we are looking here at the language and what we are going to do here is we are search again for authors, their books. We're filtering the results only for English labels. And here we are looking for environmental fiction books. And again, we limit the results to the first 100. Let's have a look at the query here. Again, author is of type writer. Then we want to have the label of the author. And there for the label, we have the first filter condition. We say the language of the author name should be en so it should be english and then we are looking for the work of the author and then we are simply looking here for the label again of the work which is the title and we are filtering exactly this title for the language of the title being english and the other new thing we are adding here we are looking for the work again written by the author should have a specific subject and the subject here should be among the category environmental fiction books. Of course, to know that you have to look closer to the knowledge graph of DBpedia and to get along with it a little bit, but you will do these kind of queries a lot then in the lab courses and in the exercises of the lab course. 
And again, we have limit 100. So we are limiting this query to the first 100. So we have it here again in the Sparkle endpoint of DBpedia, we execute it. And now you see the result is looking much better since we only have here now the English labels of the authors as well as of the titles. And now you see here probably a few familiar authors, probably you have heard here of Douglas Adams and he has written an uh, environmental book. So last chance to see, for example, and you find also more. However, the number of results here is limited to the first 100. Okay, so this was our first adventure in Sparkle. In the next section of the lecture, you will learn more. So then we are querying knowledge graphs with Sparkle again, but it will become a little bit more complex.